my view. In the West, we are in danger of turning our countries into places that can't be properly governed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that's a tough thing to say. Well, we can... And I'm not saying we're there, but I'm saying I think we're close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, could, we could also point out, I suppose, that the evidence that relatively unconstrained government spending produces inflation seems to be incontrovertible. And then we might want to discuss exactly what inflation does to people. So inflation makes each unit of currency purchase less units of value. Too much money changing and too few goods. Is exactly, neutral. exactly. And then you might say, well, who does that punish? Yeah. And the answer is, well, inflation punishes people who've been wise enough to yes. forestall gratification, Yeah. right? So if you're somebody who has been sensible and taken the medium to long-term in account, into account, and you've saved money, so accrued wealth, let's say, and the sort of wealth that enables you to have a house and and air conditioning and some opportunities for your kids, we would generally regard that as a social good, right? Because we hope that people who are not profligate and impulsive and who put a little aside for the future, for future contingencies, so that they can take care of themselves and others, those people should be valued. And if you inflate the currency by overspending, then those are the people who are preferentially punished. Because the people who spent all their money, well, they don't have any money. Inflation only affects them tangentially, but it destroys the wealth of the very people who, whose careful and conscientious striving have yeah. produced wealth to begin with. Yeah. And that seems inevitable. I mean, we've already seen that inflation break out across the Western world to quite a remarkable degree, even a degree that was unforeseen by the central banks mm. who claimed that they had it under control. I don't know what inflation is running at in Australia, but I know in, in Canada, I think on the food fronts, it's about 8% right now. And on the energy front in, the, in, the, in Europe, it's far higher than that. That's not all because of government overspending, but it's certainly contributing to that. So you punish, inflation punishes exactly the people who should be being rewarded by taking a medium to long-term view. And it, and it uh, differentially benefits people who were impulsive and profligate in their spending. And so that seems like bad social policy as far as I can tell. So I agree with all of what you've said, but I think it's really important to understand that it's actually, we've, we've done something worse than that. Because what happened was that Australia went into the great financial crisis. I don't know whether you use that term internationally, but that's what we call it here. The meltdown, from, yeah. you know, yeah. Lehman Brothers, yeah. uh, you know, a real collapse. story about the link between culture and good policy outcomes, that one was, because they didn't break the law, but by gee, they broke the spirit of everything that was decent. Mm -hmm. You know, and these are important things. Where's personal responsibility? Where's decency? Mm -hmm. Where's doing the right thing in banking more important than uh, making an instant bob? But leave that aside. Most countries actually were starting to worry about their debt to GDP ratios in the build up to the great financial crisis. They were starting to try to do something about it. Take a line through it, it was around 35, 45, 50% in a lot of Western countries. And they're saying, this is getting, uh, you know, need to wind it back, prepare for a rainy day. These are good times. They would have right to do so. Then the Lehman Brothers, you know, unsound money everywhere, exposed all over the place. At one side, no, the, state, the system nearly collapsed at one stage. Mm -hmm. So governments did extraordinary things. The government of America bought General Motors and Chrysler from memory. Oh, I don't think they bought Ford. Uh, governments everywhere put bailed banks out. Mm -hmm. Insurance companies. All that debt went onto the public sector balance sheet. Mm -hmm. You know, private citizens suddenly yeah. owed in theory, owned General Motors. They call that privatizing but, but, profit and socializing risk. Yeah, well, that's, I, I'm an Australian farmer. We sometimes get accused of wanting to do that here, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but I would push back against the charge that all farmers are guilty of it, but that's right. However, what then followed was that governments looking at this mountain of debt say, what do we do now? Because the discipline, you asked, let's come back to how we did it, mm -hmm. of tough decisions. There was no stomach for it. Matthew Paris wrote, uh, uh, you know, at the time, uh, face it, we're broke. Mm -hmm. You know, we've overdone it. We're all going to have to live much lower living standards because none of us have got the stomach, uh, you know, to do the hard work to wind back this debt that's going to be so bad for our kids. We're just going to have to... But what governments did then is they looked for inflation because inflation devalues money and mm -hmm. makes the debt smaller. Mm -hmm. And they looked for it and they pumped money into everything. We had very low interest rates for an incredible period of time. We um, 
We pursued endlessly uh, quantitative easing, which is basically printing money in a fancy way. Mm -hmm. It's always ended in tears. Think Weimar Germany. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people kept saying, where's the inflation? We want the inflation to devalue the government debts to get it under control so that we don't have to cripple people with taxation. Mm -hmm. But the inflation was there. It was in asset prices. Right, right. Housing equity. prices. And, yeah, and yeah. who did that hurt? Mm -hmm. Where's the, the social impact of that? It's in housing prices, especially for young people in this country. Mm -hmm. it, it really, really worries me. When I left school, I'm a bit older than you, Jordan. I mightn't look it, but I am. <laughs> and when I left school in the mid 70s, an average Australian house cost four times average annual earnings. Today it's 11 times, and in Sydney and Melbourne it's more like 13 times. Mm -hmm. Now that impacts a lot of things. Social cohesion, I would argue it impacts. Perhaps more seriously and related is family formation. Mm -hmm. In a time when 92 countries in the world have collapsing populations, and we haven't realised how difficult that's going to be to handle. So I think, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a very dangerous story all around. And again, I say to you, I actually have a lot of sympathy for modern politicians. I could say to them, you've lost your philosophical heart. Where are the great strands of thinking through which you used to look through to see, will this policy advance or take backwards my dream of what the country ought to be? So I could be harsh at that level. But at the other level, I'd say, We've not been prepared to delay gratification, to make tough choices, to say, yeah, look, we want to elect a government that'll do some hard things for our kids' sake to get the whole show back on the road. And here in this country, we've had a minerals boom. We're back in debt. Uh, debt to GDP ratio now is creeping out. Over time, it will get out to around 40% on current projections. 40% is the level at which those European and American countries started to lose control at the time of the GFC. This stuff matters. Mm -hmm. And as interest rates rise, more and more taxpayers' money is just going into servicing the debt. So it's mm -hmm. not buying hospitals or looking after schools or providing reparations to uh, countries for climate change uh, damage, uh, all of those things. That's all going to be debt financed from now on. Mm -hmm. And who's going to pay that debt?